moon. <laughs> what a view! Oh! <laughs> Hi, Santa. Oh, hello, Monty. Ho, ho, ho. Nice of you to drop in. Hey, I've got something here for you. Here's your Christmas present. Thank you. Oops. Watch out below! Oh, this is gonna hurt. Hi, Maddie. Monty, a present for me? Uh, sure. Oh, Monty. Thank you so much. Monty! Oh, I hope that wasn't a tie! Santa? Oh, Monty, you're right on time. <laughs> Hello, Captain Patrick. Uh, Monty, look who's here. Oh, hello, boys and girls. It's me, Monty the Moose. Do you know what time it is? It's time to put on our parkas and chill out in Alaska. You'll see what's for supper at this eagle convention. Learn why Alaskan huskies jump for joy. Do you know what kind of shoes to use to play softball in the snow? And you'll see art that melts in your mouth. It's all extremely cool and a little bit crazy. So jump right in, or should I say, uh, it's time for Wacky Alaska Winter! He's a moose, he's a moose, on a mission. Call me Monty. He can't wait to travel on another expedition. He's a master of disguises. Uh -huh. There's bound to be surprises. Come on, Monty. Take us away. Take us away. The Alaska winter. You might think it's pretty cold and always dark. Ooh, yeah. Monty. Sort of like your bedroom with the lights out. <laughs> oh! Monty, turn on the light. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Captain Pat. This is Alaska in the middle of winter. And looky here, it's not dark, at least not during the day. In most places in Alaska, the winter sun rises and sets every day. I said most places because above the Arctic Circle, where the sun just circles the horizon and never sets in the middle of summer, the sun will set around the end of November and won't rise again for two whole months. Wow, that's a long night. Lots of time for a midnight snack. <laughs> A lot of the animals who live in Alaska during the summer months leave before it gets too cold or too dark. Many birds head south to warmer places. It's called migration. The humpback whales who come to Alaska in the summer to eat take a winter vacation to Mexico or Hawaii. Aloha! Poi, oh poi, is this fun! <laughs> but if you can't head south, that leaves a whole lot of Alaskan animals and people to fend for themselves. And what do they do? Well, some animals, like brown bears, fatten up all summer so they can sleep most of the winter. It's called hibernation. The rest of us, well, we'll do what we have to to make the winter fly by. This is Monty Moose with a special TNT weather report. In Fairbanks, the temperature has dropped to minus 40 degrees. In Anchorage, it's snowing and blowing. It's time to put on our heavy winter coats, grab our skis, and get outside. Because, hey, in Alaska, there's a whole lot more than snow coming down. Well, it's 40 below when the snow is blowing. Sitting at home and you feel like you're going crazy Don't let winter close you in Get up, get out, and let the games begin With a whole lot more than snow coming down It's a crazy good time feeling going round We make the most of the world Coming down You can skate through 
through the trees where it's calm and it's quiet. You can rage, you can bite, if you like, you can try it all. On your own or with the team. Don't miss out, the fun's extreme. When the whole lot more than slow. Chill with your friends. Don't hibernate. Come celebrate. There's a whole lot more than snow coming down. It's a crazy good time feeling going round. We make the most of what we got. The weather's cold, but the plan's hot. A lot more than snow. There's a whole lot And now, an invitation from Camp Chill Cat. Looking for a place to meet friends and enjoy fine dining? Needing to rest your weary wings at a riverside spa? You're invited to join us at Camp Chill Cat. All our rooms feature exceptional views, free steam baths, and all the sushi you can pull out of the river. Join the chorus of our many satisfied customers. Okay, enough singing. Come to Camp Chill Cat, the place to be for food that's free. For airfare and reservations, call your travel agent. Hey, look at all these eagles. These are American bald eagles, national symbol of the United States of America. Let's see if we can count how many there are. Okay, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh my, Th thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. <laughs> okay, you get the idea. There are a lot of eagles here. Some winters, as many as four thousand eagles will come to the Chilkat River near Haines, Alaska, to chill with their friends. Hey, buddy, <laughs> you're waddling on thin ice. The eagles are here for one reason: to eat salmon. While many Alaskan rivers are already frozen solid, this part of the Chilkat River stays pretty much ice-free, thanks to a warm underground reservoir. No ice and lots of fish means catching dinner is, well, easy as lifting a 10-pound chum salmon with your talons. While the eagles aren't eating or playing hopscotch, <laughs> they perch in the cottonwood trees. By sitting still, they conserve energy, and that helps them stay warm. As the food supply dwindles and extreme cold weather arrives in December and January, most of these eagles hightail it out of here. Some fly as far away as a thousand miles. Okay, it's time to test your eagle IQ. Question number one. How long is an average eagle's wingspan? If you answered six feet, you're right, but... Some eagles have a wingspan up to seven and one-half feet. That's like a really tall basketball player. Question number two. How many feathers does an eagle have? You give up? Well, I'll save you the time of counting. They have, get ready, 7,000. All across Alaska, the winter season means change. Food is scarce. When a flock of bohemian waxwings finds a mountain ash tree full of berries, <laughs> they don't waste any time. Mmm, -mm, good. A berry pie without the crust. <laughs> it can get really cold in Alaska. So cold that water freezes before it can fall. 
a frozen waterfall. Imagine that. In Alaska, sometimes it can get as cold as minus 80 degrees. So, if you live outside like these doll sheep, you have to put on a heavy winter coat. Their white hair is hollow, which gives them an extra cushion of air to insulate them from the bitter cold. Doll sheep live high on the mountainsides, where the wind sweeps the snow clear, making it easier for the sheep to find food. Sometimes they have to paw through the snow to find dry, frozen grasses and other doll sheep delicacies. The sheep live in groups called bands. This is a band of doll sheep rams. The rams grow horns which are made of keratin, the same stuff your fingernails are made of. It takes a ram about eight years to grow a full curl. Mom might manage a full curl in about 30 minutes. This portion of Wacky Alaska Winter is brought to you by Whitey's Winter Wear, where our motto is, White is out of sight. <laughs> no matter the occasion, no matter your size, Whitey's has the outerwear to keep you warm and cozy in the Alaska winter. We feature several styles in fur and feathers to keep you warm and to keep you hidden. So if you're looking to change your summer plumage for a sporty winter camo look, come to Whitey's Winter Wear. Whitey's, where white is out of sight. When it comes to winter, the willow ptarmigan dresses for the occasion. Alaska's state bird is a master of disguise, trading in its brown summer wear for winter white. The white winter plumage makes it easier for the ptarmigan to hide in a snowbank. This is called camouflage. Their white feathers have another benefit. Like white fur, the white feathers are completely hollow. The air inside the feathers acts as extra insulation. There's that word again, keeping them warm. Ptarmigan also have another special winter transformation. They grow specialized feathers on their feet that act like snowshoes. Now, equipped with these feathery feet, Ptarmigan can easily scoot across the soft snow. Speaking of scooting across the snow, let's take a break and head out to the ballpark. It's time for a pickup game of snowshoe softball. <laughs> These players don't have the luxury of feathery feet, so they've strapped on snowshoes for a few innings of winter fun. Play ball! You know what? It's harder than it looks. Sometimes just getting to first base is like winning the whole game. Everyone has a different snowshoe style. There's traditional. This is the bunny hop. And the crawl. And here's one we call the head first snowshoe slide. She's safe! No matter how you swing it, it's fun in the snow and sun. If you don't have snowshoes or feathers on your feet, how else do people and animals get around in the winter? Well, here's how. Some small airplanes have skis that help them land on frozen lakes and rivers. Some people use snow machines for fun and transportation. In remote towns and villages that are not connected by roads, the rivers become frozen highways. Let's check out the traffic in Bethel, Alaska on the Yukon-Kuskokwim Delta. This is Bethel, a Yupik Eskimo village on the Kuskokwim River. Look at the houses in Bethel. They are all built above the ground, on stilts. And that's because the ground out here, just beneath the tundra, is frozen all the time. It's called permafrost. If you built a house right on the ground, it would melt the permafrost and sink. There are no roads in or out of Bethel, but in the winter, you can drive your car on a river of ice. And hey, if you don't have a car, you can call it cab. Yo, taxi! You can drive a long ways, but just remember, don't be gone too long. 
This highway will thaw in the spring. This portion of Wacky Alaska Winter is brought to you by the Alaska Extreme Therapy Center. Friends, do you suffer from cabin fever? Well, come to the Alaska Extreme Therapy Center. In just one session, we'll take you to the top of the steepest mountains in North America. We guarantee you'll forget all your problems, but you must take the first step straight down. Alaska Extreme Therapy Center. It's all downhill from here! Oh boy, okay. This is gonna be fun! Ooh, ow, oh man, ow, ow, oh, that hurts. Ow, oh, 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 that's gonna make a mark. Oh, oh, no wonder they call this extreme. Hey, don't tell my mom I'm here, okay? Ow, oh, oh. Alaska Extreme Therapy is not for the faint of heart. Not recommended for anyone worried about their own personal safety. Not intended for anyone afraid of heights. Wacky Alaska Winter does not endorse or recommend or suggest that anyone do what these athletes are doing. But <laughs> it sure looks extremely fun. Now, back to our original programming. My cousin here moves through the Alaska Winter one leg at a time. Moose have long legs, which helps them walk through deep snow to find food and escape predators. Moose are the largest members of the deer family. An adult male moose might weigh 1,600 pounds. Where do you suppose is the best place to see moose in the winter? The big city or the wilderness? Well, as many as a thousand moose spend their winter browsing in Anchorage, Alaska's largest city. When the snow gets too deep in the mountains, the moose migrate to where the streets are plowed, and there's more to eat. Just ask wildlife biologist okay, Rick well, Sinnott. Moose uh, live in Anchorage because there's food here for them, and uh, this is one of their favorite kinds of food. This is a willow tree, and you can see how much they like it because they've really chewed it down. Every single year, when it puts out these new shoots, like these little, these little brown ones here, these are new ones, they'll come along in the wintertime and they'll break them off, they'll chew them off. And so you have these stubs that are all broken off now where there's nothing left to eat there but all this stuff is still good to eat and they come back and, and they'll eat that. Moose like to eat wood and they eat, in the wintertime they eat trees and shrubs and this is an example of a tree that they really don't like to eat very much, especially in the wintertime. It's, a, it's an alder tree and it has, it has resin in it or things that don't taste good to moose in, in the bark and so they just don't like to eat this. Here's something I bet you don't know. Moose have really slippery saliva. <laughs> Their tongue is kind of like a slip and slide. That helps them swallow all those sharp sticks without sticking themselves. They can get up and they can eat for a few hours, get a bunch of sticks, swallow them down into their stomach with that slippery saliva of theirs, and then they go lay down and they rest. And while they're resting, they burp up a big chunk of food, which is all these sticks, and they chew it again for a few more minutes, and then they swallow it again. And then they burp up another chunk and they swallow it, and that's called chewing your cud. Um, and the cuds are just those little chunks of food that they keep burping up and then chewing some more and then swallowing them back down. And that helps them break these sticks down even more because the first time when they chew these sticks off, they're still big and sharp. But if they keep chewing them and chewing them and chewing them, keep burping them up and chewing them, they get to be really fine and they can, they can um, absorb all that food value in them. You might not want to swallow your food without chewing it. But it's okay to chew your cud if you're a doll sheep and you like leftovers, <laughs> or you're a hungry moose, like me. One more word about moose. They're big and they're wild, and the best thing to do is enjoy watching them from a distance. While we're in the city, let's check out the festivities at the Anchorage Fur Rendezvous. Rondi is a winter celebration. It's a time to put on your finest fur and get out of the cabin. There's something for everyone at the Rondi, 
from sled dog races to one of my favorite events, the blanket toss. Go! Monty, what's going on here? Hey, 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 not that kind of blanket toss. This blanket toss. This is how hunters in the far north, where the land is really flat, got a better view of things. Here's a Rondi event that gives dogs a chance to pull their own weight, and then some. This is the dog weight pull. The idea is to fill a sled with really heavy concrete blocks, and then ask your pet to pull it. Huh, I'm personally glad there's not a moose weight pull, but at the Rondi, all types of dogs are up to the challenge. Come on. Come on. Frank here is a champion. He weighs 50 pounds, but he just pulled a sled filled with 1,400 pounds of concrete. Well, that's, let's see, down a time then carry the 28 times his own weight. The heavyweight dogs make pulling 2,000 pounds seem like puppy play. Let's give a round of applause to Cody. He just pulled 2,300 pounds. Way to go, Code! Some dogs, like Tony, prefer this individual competition. But others like to pull together. And Kathy Hopgood of Fairbanks South Brown, Brenda the bird at the line next to Wasilla Kawabunga the Kennel here, 34 years of age. This portion of Wacky Alaska Winter is brought to you by Happy Tales Restaurant, where all we serve is mush. Sled dog racing is the official Alaska state sport. Historically, sled dogs were used for transportation, but today it's mostly just for fun or for racing. Sled dogs just love to run. When they're all in harness, they are so excited they jump for joy. It doesn't take much to get them going. Some mushers say, hike. Some say, let's go, even giddy up will work. Truth is, you can say almost anything like, mush, you huskies, and before, wow! Alaskan huskies compete in all sorts of events, from weekend neighborhood sprint races in the villages, to the big events, like the Fur Rondi World Championships. This is a sprint race, where sled dogs see how fast they can run over short distances. Another big race is the Iditarod. Mushers and their dog teams travel 1,200 miles from Anchorage to Nome. They cross three mountain ranges and it can take anywhere from a week to a month. Along the way, it's an adventure around every corner. I can't think of a better way to start the day. Wake up, shake it off and greet the dawn. Can't wait until we're on our way. We are ready, we are strong. We want to run. And we run to the call of the wilderness. We run, we run. Our spirits are up to the test. We give nothing less than our. Shine! Ah! 
Ah, there's nothing quite like it. Traveling through the wilderness pulled by a dozen of your best friends. And no one knows that better than Martin Boozer. Here we go, guys. It's Martin and his Alaskan Huskies are Iditarod champions. His dog kennel is called Happy Trails, and it's filled with a whole lot of happy tails. Martin's sled dogs are Alaskan Huskies. Ooh, you're so proud of yourself. Each one is an athlete that he has raised since they were puppies. Have you ever had a hard time naming a pet? Just think what Martin has to do. All these dogs got to have names. We pick themes. So in order to later then remember who they were related to, uh, this dog, for instance, Poitras, is out of the street names from New Orleans. There's Decatur and Camellia and uh, Chapatulis. They were all litter mates. Their um, Aurora over there is from a litter of the night theme. There's one midnight, one is called shadow, one is called um, eclipse, and then there's Aurora. So that's, the, that's the, the night name. So you see, for Martin, with 72 dogs plus puppies growing up, finding names is a snap with a sled dog wrap. Take it away, puffin' daddy. Yo! Six times a dozen, that equals 72. That's how many names we need for him and her and you. You could be a whaler, a precious ingot over here. Just know a sled dog in this hood needs a name it can reveal. There's a Kira and a K2 and an artist named Van Gogh. Lightning and Aurora that run rapid through the snow. If you've got a blizzard or are lost in a storm, you just might need a twister or midge this little sister. When it's midnight on the trail, with D2 you will fly. Don't forget Bronson Snake and Reb, by the by. Tomcat is no kitty, and Pearl is really pretty. And remember before we go, there's always room for Jello. Hmm, I think we're all relieved that that rap is a rap. What's going on here? It's the puppy wheel. Martin built these wheels to give his dogs the chance to run any time they want to. No one makes them run, they just love doing it. The puppies also start learning how to be sled dogs from the time they are little. And we teach them, even in the puppy pen, we start teaching them things. They're, they're learning to run in their exercise wheels. They're learning to eat on command. They're learning not to chew my clothes. They're learning to be just regular dogs, but um, they get to go on loose runs every day. They, they run around with us. Uh, at first, just on foot. Then later, with a snow machine, uh, they get to chase the they get to chase the snow machine. So they are being exercised from the very beginning of their life. Oh, there she goes! There you go, good puppy, huh? That a good puppy. Here's a question: How do you make beautiful art using only water? For the answer, we go to Fairbanks, Alaska. Okay, it was a trick question. You make beautiful art out of water, which is frozen into ice. This is Grady Pond, and these guys are making giant ice cubes. It takes special chainsaws with really long blades to cut into the frozen pond. What comes out are known as diamonds of the north. These ice cubes are eight feet long, five feet wide, and 40 inches thick. Each one weighs almost 8,000 pounds. That's four tons. <laughs> Imagine dropping a couple of these in your soda pop. This ice is world famous. It's so clear that you could read a newspaper through it. And it's the best ice for ice carving. Fairbanks is the place to be if you like to turn ice into art. Ice carvers from around the world compete in the World Ice Art Championships. They work day and night for two and a half days to create their masterpieces. Steve Dean and Kevin Laughlin are two of the best carvers. They're going to take a single ice block and carve a sculpture they called Hitting the High Note. Our sculpture, we have a jazz saxophone player playing a tune with a skier riding on its wake of the tune over the moon. 
uh, we wanted to be able to sing a song with this one. And uh, this was our way of representing how to do that. Hey, don't try this at home. Unless home is Fairbanks and you're an ice carver. The tools are really sharp and really fast and hey, it looks like this carver is making her own snow. What do you know? A chip off the old block. <laughs> While the carvers are carving, the kids are playing. Ice carvers have created an entire playground that will melt when the spring arrives. Hey, that looks like fun. They call this ice whirly thing a twirly. If someone tells you to get lost at Ice Park, they mean, hey, let's run around in the Amazonarium. A maze made out of blocks of ice. Let's see where this path goes. All right. Uh, hmm. Well, I think I've seen him before. Oh, hmm. Oh, okay. If we go this way, maybe we can find. Uh, 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 mazes can be confusing. But this Amazonarium is amazing and lots of fun. Let's check back in with our ice carvers. Oh, look at this. It started as a block of ice and an idea on paper, and Steve and Kevin have created a work of art. When the competition is over, all the sculptures are lit up with colored lights. Ice Park becomes a wonderland. While this ice art is on display, the sky above has its own light show. These are the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. What you're seeing are the result of charged electrons and protons colliding in the upper atmosphere. Sort of like a giant neon light, moving in giant arcs and waves of color. It's electrifying, wouldn't you say? In Fairbanks, you can see the aurora an average of 240 nights a year. This is Monty Moose with a Tundra News television sports special. We now take you to Girdwood, Alaska for the annual Slush Cup. This year's Slush Cup is sponsored by Ellie and Joe's Furniture, the place to go to waterproof your couch. The Slush Cup is one of the wackiest winter events in Alaska. All it takes is a pair of skis or snowboard and, well, I guess that's all it takes. <laughs> Contestants ski down the hill at the Alieska Ski Resort and attempt to cross a pond of really cold water. Oh! Let's watch that again in slow motion. The Slush Cup is one of the last events of the Alaska winter, kind of a celebration of the passing of winter and the arrival of spring. For another wacky event, we take you to Seward, Alaska and the annual polar bear jump. No, that's not Seward, but it is a polar bear. Let's try that again. These are human polar bears, and something has compelled them to dress in funny clothes, or almost no clothes at all, and jump into the freezing cold water of Resurrection Bay. Now, what do you suppose would cause them to do it? Here she goes! Can you say, crazy? I get cold just watching them. Whatever is making them jump must be extremely important, and it is. The jumpers are all raising money to help people who have cancer. Let's give them a big round of applause and another blanket. We now take you to the funniest moose on the planet. Hey, what's the scariest animal in Alaska? 
a caribou. Boo. Boo. Get it? <laughs> okay, folks, these are the jokes. Hello, is this thing on? Hey, you want to watch me pull a puffin out of my hat? It's about time, Monty. Time to say goodbye. Okay. Goodbye! Until my next adventure, this is Monty Moose reminding you, be good to your mothers and fathers, and to yourself. Toodaloo! Well, it's 40 below when the snow is blowing. And you're sitting at home and you feel like you're going crazy. Don't let winter close you in. Get up, get out, and let the games begin. When the whole that morning snow coming down, it's a crazy good time feeling going round. We make the most of what we got. The weather's cold, but the plan's hot. Coming down You can ski through the trees Where it's calm and it's quiet He's a moose moose On a mission Call me Monty He can't wait to travel On another expedition He's a master of disguises. Uh -huh. There's bound to be surprises. Come on, Monty, take us away. Take us away. Clear skies, fresh air. See the caribou, the birds, the whales, and the grizzly bear. Nature's finest gifts are here. Some say it's the last frontier. Well, you haven't seen paradise till you've seen Alaska, where giant glaciers rise up from the blue. Aurora borealis will light up nature's palace. The spirit of Alaska's here for you. birds are doing is called migration, moving from the place where they spend the winter to their summer homes in Alaska. It's all part of nature's rhythm. We walk from Canada, 3,000 miles we go. We fly from South America, swim from Maui and Mexico. Gonna use this land to raise our young. Fresh air and lots of springtime sun. 
So, if you're a brown bear, and you have a bear of an appetite, it's time to jam on down to McNeil for a meal. Everybody's got a favorite fishing hole. You know, some of us don't need a fishing pole, no. Gonna use my keen eyes and these claws. And I'm gonna eat like a bear because... Heading down to McNeil, down to McNeil. There's plenty to share, no salmon are everywhere. Yeah, the season is right for my grizzly appetite. It's a real deal down at McNeil. Down at McNeil. Now I usually like being on my own. Us big guys like to be left alone But once a year for a grizzly bear When there's so much salmon we don't care I'm heading down to McNeil Down to McNeil It's a family affair Even the cubs are there Yeah, we're dining out together And a salmon can one grizzly put away <laughs> If he's really jamming more than 20 a day Oh, I've come so far for that fish tartar Heading down to McNeil, down to McNeil There's plenty to share, those salmon are everywhere Yeah, the season is right It's a real deal down at McNeil. Down at McNeil. Hey, if you're a salmon, man, you better be scramming. Boy, you're gonna be my meal down at McNeil. Oh, yeah. That's it. Down at McNeil. <laughs> That's me. We interrupt this program for an urgent travel warning. The mountaintops have been covered with a substance believed to be tea dust, also known as termination dust, also known as snow. It's time for all summer visitors to hightail it out of here. Thank you and see you next season.
It's getting cold up here, too cold to stay. We're packing up and taking off, gonna spread our wings and fly away. There's a warmer climate down below. We creatures seem to know. Our instincts tell us where to go. No one's home because look who's knocking at the front door. Mama Grizzly. She has two cubs to nurse, and she's not in the mood for berries. 
With her powerful arms and sharp claws, she makes short work of the entry while keeping an eye on the back door. Now it's just a matter of time. That's how grizzly bear cubs learn how to survive on the tundra, watching their mothers. Throughout their first two or three years, grizzly moms are protector, provider, and teacher, showing their little ones how to be a cub. in the chain. Some of them are small, some are big and strong, but every creature has a purpose, a place where they belong. So don't miss the wonder in everyone you meet. Cause we all fit together To make this world complete Every creature Is a link in the chain They got something to offer Something to gain No one stands alone Together we sustain So stop and think Aren't you glad you're a link in the chain all around you but they may not cross your mind if you look a little closer there's so much more to find miracles of nature are everywhere to see you can bet there's a connection between them and you and me every creature is a link in the chain Something to offer They got something to gain Here's a beautiful puzzle So let all the pieces remain Stop and think Aren't you glad you're a link in the chain? Got something to offer. Oh, they got something to gain. No one stands alone. Together we sustain. So stop and think. Aren't you glad you're a link in the chain? Oh yeah. Woo. <laughs> 
Since 1987, Alaska Video Postcards has captured the wonders of Alaska. With the Alaska Classic Series on GCI, you will explore Alaska, see salmon-filled rivers, cruise the fjords and inlets, enjoy the antics of Mr. White Keys. Brought to you by Alaska Video Postcards and GCI. They came to build a railroad. In the end, they built Alaska's greatest city. Anchorage Is, the official legacy film of the Anchorage Centennial, tells the remarkable story of a town that sprang up along the banks of Ship Creek. With rarely seen footage, stories of triumph over adversity, highlights of a century, Anchorage Is puts an exclamation point on our centennial year. Anchorage Is, available on DVD and Blu-ray.